Hey, it's Adrian, and today I want to share with you 25 tips that you should know to make the most out of your S22 Ultra. As well, at the end, I'm going to share a tip that you can do on this phone or any other type of Android phone just to make it a bit snappier. So stick around for that, and let's get started. Let's start with the tip that I think is most important for any S22 Ultra owner. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Gallery app, which is right here. Click on this little menu at the bottom right, and then click on Settings. When we're in settings, scroll down till you see this option here called trash and it says keep deleted photos and videos for 30 days. Make sure that's enabled. And what that'll allow us to do is if you ever delete something by mistake and you need it again later, you can click on the menu here, click on trash, and you can see I have a whole bunch of photos that I've deleted. And if I wanted to restore it, I could just long press on one of them, say I want that one and that one, and you can see the option here is there to restore and I can restore it. Now keep in mind this is only up to 30 days. The next thing I want to talk about is notification history. So a lot of the times out of habit I'll just pull down, clear all my notifications or swipe them away and then I realize later oh I needed to read one of those. So to fix that issue let's go down into the settings again. So click the gear icon, click on notifications, click on advanced settings and then finally notification history. And you can see it shows recently dismissed notifications. If I scroll down further it shows notifications that were dismissed within the last 24 hours. So if I just scroll, for example, and I click uh, Google, there's a little drop down arrow here. You can see it shows a list of different notifications that I've had. Another tip that you can enable is to customize your notifications. So click on the gear icon again, or go into settings, scroll down to accessibility right here, and then click on advanced settings and click on flash notifications. Now, there's an option here for a camera flash notification. And what that does is it's gonna flash the LED light. So if I click preview, you can see the light was flashing at the bottom there. So every time you get a message or a notification, it's gonna do that. You may have also noticed that screen flash notification is on and you can do that by clicking that and you can change the color that you want the screen to flash. So if I pick green, done, and I click preview, Every time I get a notification, my screen's gonna have that green and it's gonna flash the light. So you can pick whichever one of these you want and you can also pick which app that you want. So if I click on selected apps, I can pick which app that I want that to be enabled for if there's any app that's more important than the other. Now, I'm not running a screen protector on my screen, but if you are and you notice that the touch sensitivity is not what you want, go ahead and go back into the settings, click on display scroll down until you see touch sensitivity and what that does is it'll increase the touch sensitivity of the screen if you're using a thicker screen protector. If you're like me you may prefer to double tap the screen to turn it off and on. So to do that again go into the settings scroll down until you see advanced features and then scroll to motions and gestures. So you can see there's two options here double tap to turn on screen and double tap to turn off screen. So instead of using the power button at the side here, basically I can just double tap there and the screen is off and then double tap and it's on. This next tip can really come in handy. So if you call your emergency services in your area, you can give them your location as well through the phone. So go into settings, go into safety and emergency. And there's an option here that says emergency location service. And it says send ELS location. So what this does is if you make an emergency call or text, even though you don't have location turned on, the phone will automatically relay that type of information. This next step has to do with emergency alerts. So if you wanna pick what type of alerts you get, go ahead, click into the settings there and scroll down to safety and emergency again. And we're gonna click on wireless emergency alerts. Now you can see I have alerts turned on for extreme threats, severe threats, amber alerts, but if there's any type of alerts you didn't want, you could just disable them. This step has to do with the edge panel. And if you're not familiar, the edge panel is a little panel that lives at the side of the screen and you can drag it out and customize whatever comes out for quick access. So to customize that, go down into the settings again, go into display, scroll down until you see edge panels. Now it's turned on, you can turn it off if you don't use it. Now to customize it, just go ahead and click into edge panels. And right now mine is set to apps. However, you see I can change it to live messages, people, smart select for the S Pen, task, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll leave it at panels, sorry, on apps for now. But to customize the look of the handle, click on handle. And I can either lock the position or I can move it from left to right so it's on this side now. And just to give you better visibility, 
I can set the transparency to low and you can see it there right now. If I switch to left, now you can see it over there. And of course you can change the size of it. So let's go ahead and make that much larger or even thicker. So one thing I've never gotten the hang of is using swipe gestures. I still prefer having those traditional buttons at the bottom. So to get those, you would scroll down, go into settings, go into display, scroll down to navigation bar, and you can see minus set the buttons. If you wanted swipe gestures, you could set it there. But if you are using buttons, you see you also have the option to change the button order, depending on your preference. So I like having the back button on the right side there, but you can also have it on the left side if you prefer that. Since you're always gonna be staring at this gorgeous display, first thing you should do is to customize it. So let's go into settings, display, and you can see right now, minus set to dark. Dark is gonna use less battery life because it's an AMOLED screen, those pixels are turned off. But if we go into brightness, you can see as you go into this pink area, this is where it's really gonna use the most of your battery life. There's also an option here if you're outside to boost the extra brightness here. So when you're outside, you're gonna get that extra jump of brightness. So max brightness plus that, it's really gonna drain your battery quickly, but you'll be able to use it out in the sunlight. How about if you wanted your screen really dim? In that case, you can crank the brightness all the way down, but even at night, it still may not be as dim as you want. What you can do, I'm gonna just crank this up so you can see, is if you look at these quick panels here, let's go into the option here and go to edit buttons. So you can see, you can, pick one of these and then drag it down into here. Pay attention, I have one called Eye Comfort Shield and Extra Dim. So let's close out of here. So you can see if I click on Extra Dim, it dims the screen. I can turn on Eye Comfort Shield to kind of give it like a softer or a warmer glow. And if I move the brightness all the way down, uh, you can't really even see anything on camera, but if you're in a really dark room, you can still use it. By default, the S22 Ultra doesn't come with the highest resolution on the screen. So to fix that, go into settings. Let's go back into display and we're gonna take a look at screen resolution. Now the default is usually FHD plus and you can see that's a lower resolution. So go ahead and pick the highest resolution there. While you're in display settings, make sure that motion smoothness is set to adaptive. This is where you get that variable refresh rate and refresh rates up to 120 Hertz. If you put it on standard, you will get longer battery life, but it's gonna cap it out at 60 Hertz. Depending on the type of look you like, do you like something more natural or do you like vivid colors? Well, you can change that. So scroll down, click on settings, go into display and where it says screen mode, you can see it says vivid or natural. So if I go to natural, for example, you can see if you look at the colors here and I click on vivid, you could see it's much more saturated, much more boosted. So you can pick your preference. If you can't stand having a camera cut out on certain apps, there's a fix for that. So go into your settings, go to display, scroll down to full screen apps. And right now the default is on aspect ratio. While we're here, I'll just touch on that quickly. You can force certain apps to just be a full screen, but let's go into camera cutout for now. And you can see in this app, for example, a and W, I can choose to hide the camera cutout or show the camera cutout or just leave it on the app default. So if you're a stickler for that type of stuff, you can specify on an app by app basis where you want the cutout showing and where you do not. Now, one thing that I can't live without is having an always on display. So I like that whenever my screen is off, I can see the time, date, any type of notifications, missed calls, what have you. So to get that started, scroll down, go into settings, scroll down to lock screen, and then click on always on display. Right now, mine is set to on. So you have the option here to show it as scheduled so I, you can pick when you want it to show. So if you know you're gonna be sleeping, you can set that schedule so it's not showing. Now, you can have it to only show for new notifications. I have it on all the time. I don't notice a big hit to battery life. You can also set the clock style, show music information and change the brightness. Now, I never set it to auto brightness. I like having it at max brightness. And one quick thing that you can do is, let's get out of here. I'll double tap to close. And you can see right now it's pretty bright. If you double, double tap on the time, sorry, there's a little A there, you can click on the A and then you can drag that slider to adjust the brightness on the fly without going into the menu. You can also click on the settings icon here and you can have a quick access to those settings without going through the old way. If you ever find yourself wanting to use one hand to use the phone, but it's too challenging, you can make the screen smaller. So go into settings, scroll down to advanced features and then one-handed mode and make sure that it's turned on. Now to customize it, click into it 
And since I'm using the button mode, you see that I have to double tap the home button to enable that feature. If you're using gestures, then you would just swipe down in the center bottom of the screen. So let me just demo that. If I double tap the home button, you can see it's small. I can also move it to the side of the screen that I prefer. And to exit out, I would double tap the home button again. There may be times where you need to share your mobile data. Maybe you're traveling remotely and you need to connect your laptop or just to help out a friend. So to do that, go into settings, connections, scroll down to mobile hotspot and tethering, and then turn that on. Now, if it's your first time using this, you're gonna have to configure it. So click into it, and then you can set the SSID name, your password, and the band. Now, if you click to go into configure advanced, you can set a bit more information or settings such as the mobile data limit and when to disconnect devices if they don't show a connection on there. So you can have it so that hotspot is automatically turned off if no device is connected for 20 minutes or any of these other options. Now there may be some situations where you wanna keep some apps or files private or hidden and Samsung has something built in for that. So to do that, go into settings, scroll down into biometrics and security and you can see there's an option here called secure folder. Once you click into that, you're gonna go through a wizard and you're gonna set everything up. Now, I already have mine set up, so I'm just gonna enter the password right now. Once you set up your folder, you see you have some options here, so you can set the lock type. You can set which type of apps you'd like to hide. Now, for example, if I go into my gallery here and I wanted to hide uh, this photo, for example, I can just go into the options here and there's an option that says move to secure folder. And if I do that, it's gonna move that into the secure folder. If I wanted to access that file that I just moved into the secure folder, what I would do is click on my apps, go into secure folder, and since I've already put in the password to unlock it, I could just go right into my files, and that's the photo that I put there. Samsung also has an option to get the maximum video brightness when looking at content. So to do that, go into settings, scroll down to advanced features, and scroll down until you see video brightness. Now you can see it is currently set to bright, which is what I prefer. You can also set it to normal, but if you do set it to bright, you can specify which apps you would like the brightness boosted for video. So for TikTok, I have it off, for Twitch off, but say I'm watching Netflix or Prime, I'd like it really bright, I can do that here. If you're someone who's forgetful and you forget to unplug your phone when it's charging, it can be pretty detrimental to your battery life. Here's a quick fix for that. Go ahead and click on the settings icon scroll down until you see battery and device care click on this battery area here scroll down to more battery settings and you can see there's an option here that says protect battery and to extend the lifespan of the battery limit the maximum charge to 85 percent and what that means is no matter how long you keep it plugged in it won't charge over 85 percent if you're someone who just wants the maximum performance from your phone with no regard to battery life go ahead click into settings we're gonna go back into battery and device care, click on battery, scroll down to more battery settings. Right now, the processing speed is set to optimize. You can see there's an option for a high and maximum. So this says best for short term with processing intensive apps. So if you're gonna do some type of rendering and you want a max performance, go ahead and put it to maximum. As well, in where it has adaptive battery to extend the battery life, you could just turn that off and then you'll get maximum power. When it comes to RAM and just overall how well the phone is performing, you have some options there too. So scroll down into battery and device care, find the memory setting right here, click on that. And you can see you have an option to clean the RAM. So I can go ahead and clean that. So that's gonna make the phone a bit snappier. You also have an option for RAM plus and you can see this is just virtual RAM. So it's gonna use some of your storage for virtual RAM. The default is four gigabytes. You can go ahead and set that to six or eight, but you will have to restart your phone after this setting. One feature that I don't think enough people are using is the Bixby routines. So go ahead and go into settings, scroll down to advanced features and go into Bixby routines. Make sure it's turned on. Now, right now I'm on the discover tab. So I like to be in the adaptive routines view on click more. And I like having this option here, get notified when fully charged. So if I click that, you can see anytime the battery level is equal or greater than 100%, the whole phone is gonna have edge lighting, it's gonna vibrate, and it's gonna read out aloud 
phone charge, please disconnect. That comes super handy because I always put this phone on a wireless dock. I don't always look at it. And anytime it hits 100, it plays that loud warning and I just take it off right away. Now, if you go back, you can see there's other options like in the dark, at home, before bed. Play around with these, there's a lot of great options in here. If you find yourself taking a lot of screenshots and you don't want these app icons or any of this information showing up, there's a fix for that. Go into your settings, scroll down into advanced features, scroll down to screenshots and screen recorder, and you have an option to hide status and navigation bars. While you're there, you can also change the type of format, so JPEG or PNG. And in terms of screen recorder options, you can set the selfie size if you do that. You can show taps and touches. You can also set the video quality and sounds. You can see that while I'm going through the menus here, it's not as fast as it usually looked, and that's because the animations are back on. So let's go ahead and turn those off. To do that, I'm gonna scroll down, click on the settings icon. I'm gonna go into about phone, and then I'm gonna scroll into software information, and I'm gonna look at build number, and I'm gonna keep tapping that and you can see it says you're steps away from being a developer. Keep clicking that till you get this option to put in your pin. Go ahead and put in your pin. And you can see it says developer mode has been enabled. So let's go back and back again. And now under about phone, there's this option called developer options. So let's click that. And I'm gonna scroll down until I see the option for window animation scale. You can change it to whatever you want. I like having it on off, off, off. And now you can see when I pull down the menu, everything is just really fast and fluid. If there's any tips that you know of that I didn't cover in this video, please share them in the comments down below. I'm sure everyone else would love to read them. And if you found this video helpful, please consider checking out my other video here on battery life tips that you can consider for your S22 Ultra. And I'll see you in the next one, bye.